Hi, I'm Mary Gardner, an assistant professor at The Ohio State University and a member of the Great Lakes Vegetable Working Group. The mission of this group is to address current priorities facing vegetable growers, from home gardeners up to large-scale producers. Enhancing pest control is a key concern of vegetable growers, and in this video we will discuss how beneficial insects can aid in pest suppression, and we will also examine some strategies that growers can employ to increase the abundance and activity of these species within vegetable crops. Although we are faced with many insect pests in vegetable crops, there are many organisms that provide natural pest control or biological control. These organisms are natural enemies. Many natural enemies are arthropods, and in this video, we will discuss several groups of arthropod natural enemies that are important within vegetable crops, including beetles, lace wings, true bugs, predatory and parasitoid flies, parasitoid wasps, and spiders. Many natural enemies are generalist predators. These arthropods are free living and attack a diversity of pest species as either an immature and or adult. One of the largest and well recognized generalist predators are the praying mantids. These three to five inch insects are in the order Mantidea and family Mantidae. Mantids can be found on plant stems and leaves where they sit and wait to ambush prey. They have large eyes and can turn their head 180 degrees. When insects come within their reach, they capture them using their front legs, which are modified to grasp and capture prey. Another important group of generalist predators are the Coleoptera, or beetles. This large and diverse order of insects includes many predatory species. Ladybugs, or lady beetles, in the family Coccinellidae are an important group of beetle predators within vegetable crops. Lady beetles feed on many soft-bodied insect pests, including insect eggs, small caterpillars, mealybugs, and scales. They are particularly important predators of aphids, which are small, sap-sucking pests found in nearly all vegetable crops. Lady beetle adults have three body segments, a head, a thorax, which is covered by a plate called the pronotum, and the abdomen. All beetles, including lady beetles, have two pairs of wings. The outer set of wings are hard protective covers called elytra. These wing covers protect a second set of wings that are thin and clear. Beetles exhibit complete metamorphosis, which means they have four life stages, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. Adult female lady beetles lay clusters of oval-shaped orange to yellow eggs on plant leaves and stems. The eggs hatch into lady beetle larvae, sometimes referred to as aphid alligators, because they look like tiny alligators and are voracious predators. They are typically black or gray with light markings. When the larvae are fully grown and ready to pupate, they form pupae on plant stems and leaves. A lady beetle pupa is typically the same color as the adult insect, oval in shape and wrinkled. There are many species of lady beetles that are important predators in vegetable crops. These species range in color, pattern, and size, from one eighth to one third of an inch in body length. In the Great Lakes region, both native lady beetle species and exotic species introduced from other parts of the world provide pest control. One of the most common lady beetle species is the exotic multicolored Asian lady beetle. Many color forms exist of this species. The wing covers may be yellow to red with or without spots. This lady beetle's diagnostic feature is a black W pattern on the pronotum. Another common exotic species is the seven spotted lady beetle. This beetle is round and bright red with seven black spots. There are many native lady beetles present in vegetable crops as well, including the pink lady beetle and convergent lady beetle. When looking to identify lady beetles, it is important to note that they do not always have spots, such as the polished lady beetle, and may not be red, such as the exotic 14-spotted lady beetle. Ground beetles in the family Crabidae are another important group of predatory beetles. As the name suggests, Many ground beetles are predators of pests that occur on the ground or below ground. Many species forage at night and hide in the soil or in the leaf litter during the day. 
These beetles range in size from species less than an eighth of an inch up to beetles more than an inch in length. They are usually dark and shiny and may be metallic. They often have wing covers with striations or pits. The diet of ground beetles is diverse. Depending on the species, they may attack moth and butterfly caterpillars, root maggots, beetle larvae, insect eggs and pupae, or snails. Despite their name, some ground beetles do climb onto foliage in search of prey. The large foliage ground beetle is an important predator of Colorado potato beetle larvae. Lacewings are also important predators in a large number of vegetable crops. Like beetles, they have complete metamorphosis with egg, larval, pupil, and adult stages. Both green lacewings in the family Chrysopidae and brown lacewings in the family Hemerobiidae can be found in vegetable crops. Adults have long slender bodies and two pairs of intricately veined wings. They are a half inch to an inch in length. Lacewing larvae are alligator-like, with long slender bodies and sickle-shaped mouth parts. They feed on a number of soft-bodied insect pests in vegetable crops, including aphids. A lacewing larva stabs the aphid with its mouth parts and sucks out the body fluids from the aphid, leaving behind a shriveled exoskeleton. Insects in the order Hemiptera are called the true bugs. Though many species in this order are plant feeders, many others are predatory. True bugs exhibit gradual metamorphosis, growing from the egg stage through several juvenile stages to a winged adult without a pupil stage. The immature stages are called nymphs. Nymphs resemble adults, but with shortened wing pads instead of fully formed developed wings. All true bugs have piercing sucking mouth parts that form a straw-like beak. Like lacewings, true bugs stab their prey with their mouth parts, then suck the body fluids, which kills the prey. One of the largest true bug predators is the wheel bug in the assassin bug family, Regiviidae. Adults range in size from one half to one and three fourths inches in length. These insects get their name from the half circle of spines on their thorax. Nymphs resemble adults, but are smaller with undeveloped wings. Assassin bugs are voracious predators as both nymphs and adults and feed on caterpillars, leafhoppers, moths, beetles, and many other soft-bodied insects found in most vegetable crops. Another important true bug is the insidious flower bug, also known as the minute pirate bug. These predators are in the family Anthocoridae and are small, about a tenth of an inch in length. The adults have black and white patches of color on their wings. Minute pirate bugs feed on a number of small prey, including insect eggs, spider mites, thrips, aphids, and small caterpillars. Although they are hard to spot, they are very common and are important predators in the majority of vegetable crops. Damsel bugs in the family Nabidae are a slightly larger common true bug predator in vegetable crops. They are gray to brown in color and a half inch in length. Adults are long and slender with enlarged front legs. The nymphs look very similar to the adults but with wing pads instead of fully formed wings. Their diet includes insect eggs, small caterpillars, beetle larvae, mites, thrips, and aphids. The stink bug family Pentatomidae contains many vegetable pests. However, there are also some beneficial predatory stink bug species. Adult predatory stink bugs are shield shaped. Two predatory stink bugs are found in the Great Lakes region. The spine soldier bug is brown with prominent spines on the edges of the pronotum and a distinctive dark spot on the tips of its membranous wings. It is a half inch in length. Spine soldier bugs feed on a number of vegetable crop pests, including cabbage worm, and are common in most crops. The two-spotted stink bug is another important predatory stink bug. This species has a black body outlined with yellow and red markings. It is a half inch in length. The two-spotted stink bug feeds on all life stages of the Colorado potato beetle. Flies are in the insect order Diptera. 
This diverse order includes some predatory species as well as some pests. Flies exhibit complete metamorphosis with egg, larval, pupil, and adult stages. They are distinguished from other insects by the adults only having one pair of wings. One of the most recognizable flies is the hoverfly in the family Surfidae. This fly gets its name by hovering over flowers. Adult hoverflies are pollinators that are active beginning in the early spring. Their black abdomen has light stripes resembling bees or wasps. They range from a quarter inch to an inch in length. Adult females lay their eggs near aphid colonies. The eggs hatch into worm-like larvae, reaching a half inch in length. The flies forage for aphids on plant leaves and stems. Hoverfly larvae pupate on plants or in the soil. The aphid predatory midge in the family Cicidiomyidae is another important fly species in vegetable crops. The adults are tiny flies that resemble a mosquito and are hard to spot. They lay their eggs in aphid colonies, and like hoverflies, the larvae of this species feed on aphids. Aphid predatory midge larvae are smaller than hoverfly larvae, about an eighth of an inch in length, and are bright orange to pink in color. Thus far, we have examined some important insect predators. Another group of important natural enemies are parasitoids. Parasitoids are insects that feed on or inside the body of a pest during one of their life stages, such as the larval stage. The fly family Tachinidae includes important parasitoids of several vegetable crop pests. The squash bug is attacked by the feather-legged fly, Trichopoda penipes. Adult female parasitoids spend much of their time looking for host insects to provide food for their offspring. The adults are a robust fly, ranging in size from a quarter to a half inch in length. When they find a suitable host, in this case the squash bug, the parasitoid lays one or more eggs on the pest. The eggs are light in color, and those deposited on the host are often visible without a microscope. After the eggs hatch, the young larvae burrow into the pest insect where they feed internally. The fly larvae feed inside the host insect, eventually killing it. When they emerge from the host, they pupate in the soil. There are many species of tachinids, and in addition to the squash bug, their hosts include caterpillars, stink bugs, and cucumber beetles. Cucumber beetles are attacked by the tachinid flies Celatoria diabroticae and Celatoria setosa. These flies emerge from the pest to pupate, killing it. Flies are not the only important group of parasitoids. The wasp order Hymenoptera includes many parasitoid species. Parasitoid wasps vary in size from very small wasps less than 1 16th of an inch to species greater than 1 inch in length. Parasitoid wasp females have a modified sting called an ovipositor. They use this to deposit their eggs inside insect pests. Parasitoids attack a diversity of prey. Here a female parasitoid in the family Ichneumonidae is extending her ovipositor into a tree trunk to lay eggs inside beetle larvae feeding inside. Many Ichneumonidae species are important natural enemies of vegetable caterpillar pests. One example is Diadegma insulari. This parasitoid attacks diamondback moth larvae in brassica crops. Another common and important family of parasitoid wasps in vegetable crops are the Braconidae. These wasps are often black in color and range in size from 1 8 to 1 quarter inch in length. Many Braconid wasps attack aphids. Adult female Braconids use their ovipositor to inject an egg into the aphid. The larva develops inside the host, eventually killing it. The larva pupates inside the aphid carcass, which is transformed by the larva into a swollen hard shell called an aphid mummy. An adult wasp will emerge from the aphid mummy by chewing an exit hole. In addition to aphids, Braconid species attack caterpillars, such as the imported cabbage worm and tobacco hornworm. Insects are not the only important group of natural enemies. Spiders are a very common predator in vegetable crops. All spiders are predators. These insect relatives have eight walking legs and only two body regions. 
The front body region is called the prosoma and contains six to eight eyes, fangs, and legs. The second region is the abdomen, which has spinnerets at the base to produce silk. Some use webs to catch their prey, such as those in the orb weaver family, Araneidae. Orb weavers are a large group of spiders that range in size from a half inch to greater than one inch in body length. There is an immense range of color patterns within this group. Some, like this common garden spider, have bright markings. Orb weavers produce a large orb-shaped web. The spider waits in the center of the web and uses vibrational cues to locate trapped prey. Unfortunate insects that land in the web are wrapped in silk and eaten by the spider. The lycosidae, or wolf spiders, are extremely common ground-dwelling predators within vegetable crops. Wolf spiders hunt for prey on the soil surface. They are large in size, up to two inches in total length. They are typically brown or gray and often have two dark stripes on their prosoma and a patterned abdomen. They do not build webs, but females use silk to construct an egg sac, which she uses to carry her eggs with her. When the eggs hatch, the female carries the young spiderlings on her back. Eventually, they will disperse through crop fields and other habitats. Crab spiders are in the family Thomicidae. They are sit and wait predators and can be found on flowers, on plant leaves and stems, or on the soil surface, waiting for prey with their legs outstretched. Crab spiders have a flattened body with diverse coloring, from bright neon to dark with gray and brown patterns. Body length ranges from one quarter to three quarters of an inch. The front two pairs of legs are much longer than the back two pairs, and the spider will hold the front two pairs of legs out at their side like a crab. The disturbances we create when producing vegetable crops, such as planting, tilling, pesticide application, and harvesting, can make these habitats a difficult place for natural enemies to thrive. However, there are many strategies that growers can employ to reduce the impacts that these practices have on natural enemies. In this section of the video, the Great Lakes Vegetable Working Group will take you on a tour of some projects examining different habitat management strategies throughout our region. Conservation tillage is a practice where cover crops are planted in the fall or the spring before the main crop and the herbicide application is applied uh, before the main crop is planted so that this cover crop uh, turns into uh, mulch and this mulch can be um, a habitat for natural enemies and these natural enemies can then attack the pests that are on the main crop during the season. This is an experimental cabbage field located at Michigan State University, where researchers are testing the effects of conservation tillage on cabbage pests and their biocontrol agents. The experimental plots you see here had oat cover crop planted in the spring of this year, which were killed at different times after transplanting cabbage into the field. This is why in some plots, the cover crop residue is completely broken down, and in others, the residue is still standing. Conservation tillage, or strip tillage, reduces the amount of soil tilled in a field to only a few inches within the planting row. The cover crop grown in the previous fall or the spring is killed by a herbicide application to reduce nutrient competition for the main crop. We found in this experiment that killing the oak cover crop later in the season and allowing greater cover crop biomass to remain in the row middles increases the abundance, diversity, and efficiency of beneficial insects, including predaceous sting bugs and lady beetles, while supporting lower pest populations. In this cabbage field, biocontrol is greater in plots with mulch compared to plots with bare soil in the row middles. Mulching provides many benefits in vegetable crop production. Mulches help to retain soil moisture, reduce weed competition, and provide a habitat for natural enemies. By mulching in between rows of a vegetable crop, you provide natural enemies with protection from direct sunlight and from their predators, allowing them to move between rows of the vegetable crop to consume pests. Mulches might also harbor some alternative prey, which while not posing a threat to the vegetable crop itself, provide an alternative food source, which can increase natural enemy populations, particularly in the early spring when you need to build natural enemy populations up 
prior to pests being present within the vegetable crop. There are many different types of mulches. Dry mulches such as straw, bark, newspaper, or corn stalks can be added in between rows, or even living mulches such as ryegrass can be used. What about the effect of insecticides on natural enemies? Many of our insecticides are very toxic to the natural enemies. So if we need to use an insecticide for one of the pests on a crop, we should try and choose an insecticide that will have minimal disruption of the natural enemies. Here we're in a cabbage field where we have a fairly high population of the pests, the cabbage worms, but we also have a very high population of parasitoid wasps that are helping keep the, the caterpillars suppressed. Um, but we felt that wasps alone are not quite doing an adequate job, so we wanted to supplement the program with an insecticide. Generally, insecticides fall into two general categories. Some are what we call broad spectrum that have a wide range of activity. They kill caterpillars, beetles, aphids, sucking pests, many different types of pests. Whereas other insecticides are what we call narrow spectrum that only target one type of pest without affecting the others at all. Another name for these narrow spectrum products is selective insecticides. Here in this cabbage field, the selective insecticide we've chosen is BT. There are different brand names such as Dipel, Javelin, Zentari. All of these are toxic to caterpillars only. They don't affect the wasps, flies, lacewings, lady beetles, any of the other natural enemies. There's three types of things that we could do that, that people can help enhance their beneficials. One is to try and mimic nature by having spatial diversity. By that I mean having some tall crops and short crops. So you have this opportunity for having different levels so natural enemies can hide in or feed on. Um, then the second thing we like to try and do is have genetic diversity and that's where polyculture systems come in where we try and not just have a monoculture of all corn and soybean we like to grow multiple crops we like to in this setting we like to grow apples and we like to grow raspberries and cabbage and tomatoes so that gives us more stability as well and the third type of biodiversity that we think is very important is temporal diversity. We try and spread things out, harvest out by having things flowering and fruiting at different times so that natural enemies have food available when the prey's not there. So by having this temporal diversity, we normally do this by having an early variety of, of, of apples or mid, and then a late or an early variety of blueberries, a mid-harvest blueberry and a late. So you spread out the harvest, and that helps uh, our natural enemies being able to recover and rest when there's no prey around. The addition of flowering plants into vegetable production systems is one way to enhance natural enemy populations. Flowering plants provide natural enemies with resources such as shelter, alternative prey, and pollen and nectar. Natural enemies like hoverflies and parasitoids utilize pollen and nectar resources, so providing these to them in the form of flowering plants can increase their abundance within adjacent vegetable production areas. One way to incorporate flowering plants into a vegetable production site is by planting the plants in strips adjacent to your vegetable crops. Many different types of plants have been used in habitat management, and these include sweet alyssum, coriander, phacelia, and buckwheat. Although many types of plants that provide pollen and nectar may be used in habitat management within vegetable fields. One of the ways to enhance beneficial insects on your farm is to think about incorporating native plants in the farmstead. Native plants provide pollen and nectar to beneficial insects and they can be incorporated on your farm in a variety of ways. You might think about uh, planting small strips of plants, perhaps along ditch banks, or uh, uh, to buffer waterways, or you might think about larger plantings, conservation reserve program uh, and other prairie restoration uh, programs can help uh, farmers put these habitats on their farm. On behalf of the Great Lakes Vegetable Working Group, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope we've provided some useful information on identifying and enhancing natural enemies in vegetable crops.